How many times in the last week have you, your family, used an Arts Grow book? Chumash, Siddur, Gemara, Machzer, Tanakh, Medrash, Rashi, Ramban, Cookbook, Emuna, Tfila, Children's Books. How many times? And how many hundreds of thousands of times, maybe millions of times, all over the world have people used art scroll books? In two words, in two words, what made it possible? Mayor Zlotowicz. Good evening. In the early 1920s, the young Rav and his wife came to the United States after 12 years of learning in Lomja, Poland. He quickly gained respect as a Talmud Chacham, he was a Moyo Mashkiach, and in 1927, he became the Rav of a shul. Torah education was scarce and Shmir Shabbos was dwindling in the America of the 20s, 30s, 40s. Life was hard for Rabbi Aaron Zlotowitz and Rabbi Sinfruma, but they persevered. Their youngest son was born in 1943. The doctors did not think he would make it. They gave him a very small chance to live, but he fooled them. The way he fooled naysayers all of his life. Mayor Jakob Zlotowitz was a normal kid, went to Yeshiva's RJJ, good head, not an athlete, he was a stutterer, but he had a great sense of humor and he had real good artistic talent. After high school, he went to Masifta to Ferris Yerushalayim and he became enamored with the Godel Hador Reb Moshe Feinstein's itself. He became very, very close to him. And after the Rosh Hashiva's Ptira, he remained very close to the new Rosh Hashiva, Reb Dovid Feinstein Shlita. If you had told anybody in those days that Mayor Zlotowitz would transform the Jewish world, that he would become the Rabbi of Klal Yisrael, they would have said you were crazy. But just as he fooled the doctors, he fooled the pessimists. After he left the yeshiva, he formed Art Scroll Studios. Art Scroll. They made illuminated, decorated, colorful scrolls, brochures, subas, and that was a decent living. And then came 1975. Mayor had a very close friend. Mayor Fogel. He was a Yeshiva Rebbe, a great Rebbe. Everybody loved him. And then, without warning, he died in his sleep. Shocking. And Mayor wanted to do something in his memory. He wanted to do something that would be lasting, that was different, that would have an impact. And he came up with this idea of writing a translation and commentary on Megillus Esther and finishing it by the Shleishim, by the end of the Shleishim morning period. <laughs> really an impossible job. When my father started Megillus Esther, I was 10 years old. I remember coming down every morning. He'd be sitting at his desk with piles of svarim, papers, notebooks all over. And when I got to sleep, He'd be in the same position. And we're talking about Megillus Esther. We're talking about putting a color jacket on a, on, on a Jewish book. Who ever heard of that before? For 30 days, he could not, didn't eat and could not, didn't sleep. 
He came to me with a finished product, hand-bound, with something beautiful. Everyone was so excited. And what's coming out next from Arts Grove? When you think about it, especially in the 70s and 80s, it was a massive accomplishment that he made. He had a feel for beauty, and he had a feel also for eternity. And when he combined those two in Art Scroll, a miracle happened. No one could have imagined the influence that it has had. And then we hit a dead end. There were so many things that we wanted to do that we felt that we should do, but couldn't do because the funding was not available. They struggled mightily in the beginning. They would, uh, he would uh, call me on Friday mornings and he says, Judy, I need a few thousand dollars to cover my payroll. Could you lend it to me? I always got it back. Yantif was always difficult for him. He was always afraid that, he, that there was no income coming in on Yantif. And he would, and so he needed to borrow money for Yantif. This product, but there are Chateva should now continue. There was no money, they had to borrow money. They had to mortgage your houses. That means mayor, Noss and Shia. And never did I hear him complain, I think we have to close up. My, my office is that it's not gonna work, like I have for many clients, but they're not doing well. No, he had to go on, it was gonna work. And then, and then, HaKadosh Baruch Hu sent someone to the door. It was, looking back maybe, it was Eliel Hanavi. The reason I got in touch with Art Scroll was that I was enormously grateful for Art Scroll for having opened up um, Hebrew literature, religious literature, uh, to me uh, for the first time in a way that I could understand. I, I wanted to be, do something to thank Art Scroll, and I didn't know whether there was any way to do it, but uh, I decided that I would get in touch with them. And so what I'd said to them was I, I got a better understanding of how money was raised just to finance the enterprise. And I said, you know, that you're not doing this very efficiently. You need a foundation. They said, will you set up the foundation? And I said, sure, I'll be glad to set up the foundation. And now that the Missouri Heritage Foundation was created, it enabled so many of my father's dreams to become a reality. So many of the titles that we use on a daily basis were made possible because of the foundation and available at an affordable cost to all of us. My father understood the responsibility of running the foundation with integrity. Rabbi Zlotowicz uh, insisted all the business functions of the, Her of the Missouri Heritage Foundation be done scrupulously well, ethically, and to the highest standards. And then, we were ready for our most ambitious project. 73 volume elucidation of Talmud Bavli. My father wanted to be involved in a project that unified the Jewish people. Jay's father had the vision and the foresight to involve us and to make the commitment, but it's Jay who fulfilled the commitment and carried it all the way through. And there were some, some difficult times in there where he had to make decisions and go forward and he stayed true to all of that all the time and to finish it the way his father would have wanted it done. And to publish 73 volumes in 15 years, those volumes were impossible. In this office, walk, walking through the night, we could not miss that deadline. He was extremely strict about that. If we were going to miss the deadline, then he would call in more staff, but it was, or hire more staff. It was not an option to be late. Thousands and thousands of people are learning Gemara, even though they may not have had the training when they were young, youngsters, or they didn't take to it. But now, because of the availability of Art Scroll, they were able to get into Gemara and to finish Mesechtas and to be, be kind of shas. The Hatzlocha of Daf Yaimi is because there was Art Scroll. That's clear as day. Without Art Scroll, Daf Yaimi would not have achieved the popularity that it did. His life was his children. As my nephew Aaron Morgenstern said at the Levayan in Eretz Yisrael when he spoke, 
He said, Zaidi, you were so into your children and your grandchildren. When did you have time for Art Scroll? He was so busy and had so much to accomplish and so many people to deal with and take care of. And yet everyone felt that family was first with him. From the day I got engaged, he treated me as a daughter. And he always said, there's no in-law children in this family. You're all my children. And he carried through with that always. He couldn't have done it without Ima. She always encouraged him. She was always at his side. Whenever he would come to Eretz Yisrael, automatically, I, would, I, I had to call him within five minutes of landing. I would automatically call him because otherwise, he'd, as if he had nothing to do, he'd be like, wait, you didn't call me yet? I've been, I've been there already five minutes. I've been there 10 minutes. What does that mean you didn't call me? He had another family too. The Art Scroll family. Everybody who worked with us in Art Scroll, Minnesota. Everybody was loyal to him and loved him because we all knew he was loyal to us and he loved us. I lost my mother. Eight months later, I lost my father. Eight months later, I lost my I missed the relationship. I missed the, I, there was a certain relationship. I was able to go to him and talk to him about anything. He had great concern for his employees. That was one of the things that I learned from him, how careful you have to be with someone else's livelihood, how you have to worry that he gets paid on time, and how you have to worry that he shouldn't lose his job over some minor thing. When you walked by that office door, and you looked in, and he looked up from whatever he was busy, you got a smile like it was a son. And that was just a pick-me-up. I'm a Balchuva, and uh, my parents were in religious, my grandparents were in religious, and to have somebody that religious, part, being a religious part of my life, to care about me so much and to be able to uh, appreciate and always, you know, ask how am I doing, how is my day, how am I feeling, it, it's a very special thing. He didn't hesitate to uh critique you, but when he would compliment you, you just felt engulfed by his warmth. To me, the thing that struck me so much about him was his pursuit of perfection. Perfection from everyone, and he pushed everyone for perfection because he expected perfection from himself. He was a perfectionist. If you want excellence, you gotta demand excellence. It's not a person who looked for covet at all, but when you looked at him, you saw this was an other mashallah. He yeah. carried himself a certain way. Exactly. And, and he was a real gentleman. He was a scholar. Whatever he did, he did with great quality and had to be right. He could very easily speak to Abel Yossi, to Abraham Khan Yossi, and at the same time to a businessman, a banker from, from a different world, even not a Jewish person. He was a bridge, but he himself was on both sides, not just a bridge, he was on both sides. He had so many people who considered him to be one of their best friends, and he really was. Not just dedicators and supporters, troubled people, down and out people, people who needed encouragement. You could go to him with a personal problem, and he would do whatever he could to help you. And I was once uh, pre finished preparing a speech and he said to me, am I ready? And I said, I'm ready, I'm just debating one thing. Should I, should I not say it? So he said, what is it? So I told him. He looks at me, he says, say it, just say it. And I said, okay, I will say it. Three hours later, he comes over to me, he says, I thought about it a lot. Please, don't say it, not a good idea. And if I should have said it or not said it is not the point. The point is that this man, who was so busy, who had hundreds and thousands of people that would do anything for five minutes, he said the words to me, I thought about it a lot, which is a simple statement that he loved me. And I think there are hundreds and thousands of people who believe that as well, that he simply loved us and wanted us all to be the best that we possibly could be. He was a mensch. He was a man that loved me and I knew it. Right? He made me feel good, he made me feel real. The way Rabbi Meir Zlotowicz made me feel was like 
that he only talked to me and it was a personal connection about me and him and the rest of the world was secondary and then if you do a little research and you speak to other people everybody I spoke to said the same thing. I was uh, Mayor Zlatowicz's best friend. Now, someone may take offense to that because they think they were their, his best friend but the truth of the matter is so many people thought that Mayor Zlatowicz was their best friend. You know, sometimes you have relationships with people in Moistis and, you know, you're a donor, so they're friendly. But this was a lot more than just that. You know, you felt his friendship. I guess maybe there was the, the Rabbi Zlatowicz, the editor of the Talmud, and then there was the mayor that we knew. He was just so easy to talk to, to be with. It's, his soul was so open and kind just to have him as a friend always it felt so good to talk to him and call him and get his opinion on things, share happy occasions. Neo was just probably one of the busiest guys that I know, but he always found the time to call me up. He just, he had all the answers and every single thing he said came with not just experience, but also Das Taira. He used to tell me, Hanoch, I have no choice. The man did me a favor. I owe him forever. And it's really that meter of, of Hakor Satev was so strong by him. Anything that I did for him, uh, he was effusive in his thanks and his praise beyond the call of anything that one would normally see. But his, his Hakor Satov was with, uh, without precedent. But not only the people that he knew, the people who came in contact with him, what about the hundreds of thousands of people all over the world whose lives have been changed or certainly improved because of what he accomplished. I don't think it's possible for the Atlanta Scholars Colo to have done any outreach whatsoever without having the polished professional appearance of Art Scroll, Svarim Art Scroll books, charts that Art Scroll has produced in order to provide people something to see, to look out, to draw them in. And the first thing I would do was look and try to find the Arts Grove Sitter before they're all gone. He made the turn out that this is part of the life of a person. Today, everybody learns, everybody's learning, and the credit goes to a mayor. The mayor Zechrein Levracha was a visionary person. He saw opportunity, he saw a need, he visualized things that 99% of Klausel did not visualize. He saw the future. It's obviously a call that he answered from the Rabbanishman. Because whatever he touched in it, it was gold. In our generation, the greatest teacher of the Jewish people, I think uh, beyond anyone's belief, was Rabbi Meir Zlatovitz. He made the Torah available to the English-speaking Jewish world, to thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, perhaps even millions of Jews. If it weren't for Art Scroll, not thousands, but there's hundreds of thousands of us, the us spans the length and breadth of the Jewish people. We'd never learn what we're learning. We'd never understand the text that we are wrestling with if it wasn't for Art Scroll taking us and holding us by the hand. It's not enough to have the Gemara, the Chumash, the Mishnayis. You also need inspiration. You also need to want to learn. And he provided that as well. He made Art Scroll part of the Jewish life. Not just from the study side, but from the everyday side. Uh, that in my opinion, uh, he was the biggest Marbet Steyra Kaladis Royal ever had. Uh, today, there isn't a, a city uh, uh, anywhere you want the bus, on the train, uh, somebody will be there with an art scroll. Wherever I went, there was the art scroll. Where's the art scroll? On the ship, art scroll. South Africa, art scroll. We're very appreciative that we're able to see the fruits, that uh, wherever we go around the world, wherever we travel, you walk in any synagogue, you, you see a Schottenstein book there, you see an Art Scroll book there. The Art Scroll revolution, is, it's all over. I, I just saw somebody talking about how he grew up and how things changed. He says, when he grew up, it was B.A., before Art Scroll. 
Like it's a whole new chronological concept, like BA, this is BC, BCE, BA before art school. There's all kinds of movements, you know, there's the OU, there's a good, uh, and we're all doing good things. But Art Scroll has reached places that none of us have reached. Gedalia says now, very often, he says, I don't know how Dad had time for everything. But he really did. He was a person I looked up to, and that whoever knew him looked up to. There's only a few people in my life that I can say really made a big difference, and he's one of them. It really, uh, really, the, really that, you know, changed my life. There's nothing we could ever do in our lifetime to thank Mayor Nussin for what they did for us and our family. The sense of loss gets greater as time goes by. I feel the void so often when I think of who I can call when a critical issue comes up, when a serious matter, or when I just need somebody to whom I can complain. He was a sounding board, an advisor, a mentor, and he was somebody who left a void in everyone's life because he could deal with everyone at their level and valued each and every person. Every man, thanks. Yeah, we all loved you. We all love you. We all miss you. And we're going to carry on the work that you do. For over 46 years, I worked with Mayor every single day and many, many nights. A friend who cared for me for every part of my life. He was a teacher. He was a mentor. He was an educator. He taught me. He brought out the best in me. And I miss him dearly. A normal person would have been full of himself and would have realized that he is the catalyst for all of this. Didn't exist the mayor. I'm God's waiter and I'm going to do for as long as he wants me to. And I pray that under Gedalia's leadership this will continue and I have no doubt that it will because he laid a solid foundation. He has made Torah popular. He has changed the lives of countless people. It was this maybe the smoothest transition uh, from fa a founder to a successor I've ever seen in the nonprofit sector. The key to a successful organization is how it passes down to the next uh, leadership. We have all the confidence in Gadaya. He has the skills, the drive, the love, and he's going to do it. With Daniela by his side, I have no fear that our scroll will continue and thrive and grow just as Mayor would have wanted it, and even more so. I can't even believe it, that there's already a transition. It's so smooth, so seamless. Gedalia's inherited his power, his charm, his vision, and Gedalia's gonna pull Art Scroll right through for the next 50 years. And we give him a bracha that he succeeds. Kedalia was thrust into this role unexpectedly and I will say from the moment it happened, he automatically had people surrounding him who were helping him tremendously. The night my father passed away, I was on the phone with Jay many, many times. He kept on calling and supportive. The friends and supporters of my father have been the most incredible people in my life. His friends became my friends. How many of them pick up the phone, Gedalia, how are you doing? Is there anything I can do for you? Where do you see that? It's because there was a genuine love. It's a family relationship. When you're just a friend with somebody, so the person passes away, and that's it, the friendship is over. But when his friends felt that they were part of the family, Families forever. For 41 years, for 41 years, in the next office was my friend, my mentor, 
my inspiration, my Siamese twin. And now, and now, in the next office is my friend, my mentor, my inspiration, my Siamese twin, Kedalia.